What up, y'all? It's your boy Rob back, and let's see. Ooh, yeah. Uh, we are going to be reacting to the PlayStation Showcase. Should be starting any minute now. Uh, the PlayStation Showcase for September 9th, 2021. Look at that perfect timing. I assume the music is kind of dimming. Did I start this at the perfect time? I did not. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I literally had to power rush to get home from work. Ah, give me one second. There we go. I had the power to get home from work just in time for this. Captured on PS5, here we go. I'm curious where we're gonna get. We're gonna get some stuff that we, we would have gotten if this was an E3, maybe God of War, maybe Horizon. This is looking more modern. No. Uh, it's like a welcome to PlayStation commercial. Okay. So I've seen some kind of Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy-esque stuff, but also there was God of War in the background, Uncharted right there. Adjust the volume a bit. That was too loud. Sound better? Yeah, it's a little better. There we go. All right. Yeah, I'm curious about what we're going to get today. I am really interested. Queen captured. Again, I think this is just an introduction to the idea of games. Not really sure what's being marketed here. Is it just a cool thing to watch? There's Aloy. I got my Aloy statue up there. I'm real hyped for uh, Forbidden West. Yes. Horizon Forbidden West. I always want to say Zero Dawn, but... All right, what do we got? What do I got over here? Tom Barry. I 
I'm Jim Ryan, president Jim and CEO Ryan. of Sony Interactive Entertainment, and welcome to the PlayStation Showcase. At PlayStation, we believe in pushing boundaries and setting mm. the benchmark for creativity and excellence in entertainment. Here we go. We always love the opportunity to speak directly with our community. Thank the new technology in PS5 enables development teams to build more exciting and I'm curious if they're going to talk about any of the recent controversies going on in PlayStation. We've never been more grateful for the PlayStation. The DLC for Ghost of Tsushima, Demon so Souls. Thank you for allowing us time I still got to some significant buy Returnal and the remake of Demon Souls, which I so without further ado, want to play. Let's look at some I think I'm going to do Demon Souls in October games. for my horror. Here we go. Lucasfilm. Is it going to be... No. Peace is a lie. I don't... That is what the Sith believe. <laughs> they promise power. Could it be a, a remake of Kodor? Now they wield it. Could this be Revan? The greatest Sith in generations. The, the, the greatest... Yeah. Revan! They must be stopped. Three or remake? Remake! Oh! Either way, I was gonna be hyped. They, this was rumored. I know this. they've been talking about doing a, a remake of Knights of Gilbert. Is Bioware not involved? Remade for the PS5? I, I'm happy. I'm really happy. I love Revan. I love the original Kodor. Uh... Two was was decent in my opinion. I played a lot of the old. I played a decent amount of the Old Republic, uh, the MMO, which had the Revanites in it, and you could get Revan's armor and everything, which was really cool. Uh, I. This is um. Bayonetta DMC looking chicanery over here. With some very tight JRPG bodysuit. That was cool. I liked the, the image of the glass there. We're in space. Spice! Could this be the... Ugh. That's a JRPG monster. It's just eyes and wings. Yep. My mother in heaven. Our attempt to guard the fault. We cannot fill the sacred duty of defeating our enemies and saving humankind. But now we've added to ascend again and devote what is left of our lives to fight. So forgive us our sins. Watch over us and lead us not into temptation. Oh, that was a weird, like, veiny angel statue monument. Alright. Hack and slash combat. Ugh. That's like, uh, some old god stuff. That's some um, Cthulhu ass. Old one tentacle, yeah. Man. Still waiting for us. Mother's Sphere's Redemption. Was this head just a, a, a ring of spikes? That one's just their wheels. Stalker. The monster just. Oh god, it, it was a wheel. It was like spinning blades. And the monster design is. is Weird. I toyed with it a little bit. 
Oh, pudding. We got our quick time events. We got our sliding down a pipe mini game. The combat doesn't look terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to how it feels, how it plays. The... Again, giant spinning disc head with three different rows of blades. Like, it's not graphically the, the best, but it's a, a very interesting aesthetic design. Project Eve. Why are you here? Oh. That's so overdesigned, and I. Interesting. Gearbox, uh, I'm assuming gonna be Tiny Tina. Yeah. Which we saw like five times during uh E8. Uh, Has returned! <laughs> Fools! Your party of heroes can't stop me! It's you, baby. Right, we have the uh, the high tech medieval s hyper advanced Borderlandsy weapons. What was giant weird metal and magic? A uh, giant lizard hammerhead. Uh, it was the custom characters. I'm curious how that's gonna go, cause the that's adorable. You know, some of you may be asking, Tina, where are there guns in a fantasy world? And I am just so glad you asked, because shut up your face and get shot! Huh? All right, oh, we got mimics, cool. We got dragons or wyverns, undead. Pretty typical tabletop RPG fare, so I'm I'm down. I'm a big D and D fan. Literally have my my dice within hand's reach. Ah, uh, we got bards. We got loot. We got ice meteors. <laughs> Was that? Oh God! Why am I blanking on the the uh, ready, Jack maybe? Unicorn's name? No, Butt stallion. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Right, Again, I said I was in. No end credit scene here. This ain't no super duper hero movie. Tiny Tina. Uh, I have a friend plays D and D. She herself is tiny, and her name is Tina. So that's how I'll remember that. Square, what do we got, Square? Luminous. I'll let you in on a secret, but I'm a pretty big deal. Real big deal. We are getting Your future begins here. I promise we'll go somewhere that loves cats. It's not gonna be Life is Strange, because they still haven't released the next Life is Strange yet. Clean air. Bright skies. Maybe. Oh wait, no. Is this a uh, project? I'm, I'm forgetting what the. Uh... Oh god, it's back in my notes somewhere. I, I'm trying to remember. It was like Project Athea or something. Project. And for, for not Forsaken. It sounded similar to Forsaken. Project Athea, right? Forspoken. No, you would call us anyway. I swear to God, asshole, show yourself. Show myself, I've shown. Where are you? Right here, at the end of your arm. 
Okay, so let me get this Talking straight. Bracelets. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing a freaking dragon, and oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. Did I just do that? Wait, I just moved it with my freaking mind. <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic. You got some fun-looking mobility. Police, I'll probably find us. Oh, that's too far. Good to know there's a line. The uh, the voice, the lip flaps didn't quite match there, but I'm recording. Is that a rock machine gun or just oh? You are the only hope we have. Special. Kiron is planning on facing off with Sila. Tanta Sila is the strongest and most formidable of all the Tantas. I don't know what that word is. The great service by killing her. It is. Oh, it looks like a decent variety of magic. Water, ice, fire swords. Yeah, Forspoken. I'm sold. I like good mobility and, and cool. I want to see more, obviously, but. I am the one you seek. The one and only Tanta Sila. Shield magic. Spring 2020. Two. For decades, Team Rainbow has been the shield against the worst global threat. This is the uh, the alien invasion. Hostage situations. Where you can I lose bits weapons. of your team. The threat of nuclear war. But now. We face the greatest terror. Right. Rainbow Six Our world incursion or invasion or attraction. <laughs> Looks like it'd be I, I remember liking what I saw of this at E3. They're doing the good, modern, uh, yeah, Rainbow Six gameplay. We will move as one. We will think as one. We will do but it's mainly, it it's all PvE. As one. Yeah, the, the goop, that... Mm -hmm. The spike shooters, I remember. I remember, yep. Together. We enter the unknown. And you can lose your teammates and you have to go rescue them if they get taken out. Before if you ever want to use them again. And no one right there, will yeah. be left behind. Knowing my luck, every single mission to rescue a hostage would make me lose another person and I have to rescue them and probably lose another person in the process of that and so on and so forth forever. But uh, I'm willing to give it a try. I got some friends that are probably willing to do that. Epic. Remedy. It's coming for me. Whatever you do, don't go out in the dark. Stay in the light. The Deerfest guests have already started to arrive. Just ran into one on the ferry. A famous artist, no less. Alice? This is uh, Alice? Alan Wake, right? My wife, Alice, the she's first. missing. Calm down, Mr. Because it was a Last 360 night, exclusive. Night I was missing a week. What had happened to me? I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it. I have Alan Wake for PC on Steam, but I have I never Alice. played it. It's been years. I still have, to this day, have yet to play Alan Wake. And I know I like Remedy. Uh, Control was one of my favorite games two years ago when Control came out. And I was specifically told if I liked Control, I'd like Alan Wake. Like a mystery thriller drama, right? My name 
is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. I don't know if I can justify remastered. I don't know if I can justify buying that. October 5th. Less than a month? Hey, more stuff for GTA 5. It's been uh, close to a decade now, right? Oh, yay, but... Oh, right, it hasn't been on PS5 yet. When did GTA 5 come out? September 17th, 2013. Came out eight years ago, and it's still... It's... Not quite at Skyrim level yet. I think we're gonna literally make out like madness on it. When that released, I was still working at uh, a GameStop up in. Menu. No, West. West Nyack, New York. Came out of PlayStation March 2022. <sighs> Woo, GTA 5 again. Is this, um... Ghostwire? You still haven't seen a lot from Ghostwire, right? Ghostwire Tokyo? Bleeding mist. Slender Man. I like the hand sign. Oh, we did see that before. And these are very, like, interesting takes on yokai and, and urban legends. When forced to face it. Still checking. your fear. I will be her salvation. Mark. Mark. The time is nigh. It's an interesting. The world we see another yellow raincoat. Could that be like a Yuki Ono right there, the snow maiden? That's creepy. A new age will dawn. I like that it's all hand signs to cast the spells and use your powers. I may or may not have recently rewatched a little bit of Naruto, so no release date for that. I didn't see. I have to go back and check. But all right, I'm on board. Still, I was. I remember being on board the first time I saw it, which had to have been years ago now. Guardians All right, Guardians of the Galaxy. This is coming out like next week, right? Or two weeks? Seeking truth. I already got this pre-ordered. I, I know. I'm fine. The Matriarch wishes to share it with you. United in the light of belief, all suffering, all grief will end. Oh. Ah. Ah. What's wrong with you? Oh, I think... Yeah, I'm, I think I'm having a heart attack. He's trying to distract him. Uh, fine. Cosmo! How you doing, buddy? Cosmo the dog, yep. During that ritual with the priests, they kept talking about a promise. Like they were drinking funky juice or something. And we were seeing bits of their past. So let's investigate for you. We saw Drax. And not kind with all. There he is. Hey, world mine, long time no see. The current probability of defeating the Universal Church of Truth is 0.3%. Is that bad? It sounds bad. It is. I hope you got one hell of a speech plan, Peter. That makes two of us. Mm -hmm. Follow me! 
Again, it doesn't look like the greatest Marvel game. It looks a bit janky. It still looks a bit janky in this, but... I'm down. I'm down for the ride. Nova Corps? I'm curious if we'll get any more with the uh, Nova Corps. Maybe like Richard Ryder or something? That was completely intentional. The Milano's on her way. I don't know how I feel about Rocket's little uh, beard bead. His little braided beard beads. The little hipstery Rocket. Uh, Masquerade? Right, is the new uh, Bloodlines 2? Masquerade 2? I don't know which one. What, is it Masquerade 2 or Bloodlines 2? Oh, yeah, Vampires. Superpower Vampire. The Nosferatu. I know a little bit about the mythology and the mythos. I don't know a lot. I've still never played any of the Masquerade or anything within the Masquerade universe because I know there's a game, I know there's a tabletop. Bruja. Vampire Masquerade Blood Hunt. Right, we did see about this with them being hunted. Coming out this year. Or is it just a test is coming out this year? Welcome to the Eon program. Picture your perfect you. Your help, my perfect me. Your enlightenment, your ashes. Uh, this is our death proof. Which is also coming up very soon, right? Yeah. Sorry, Death Loop, not Death Proof, not the. September 14th, so. Five days. And end this party that you can never leave. Very Hotel California, right there. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Alright, I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit more. Because it is music, so I don't want to get another claim. But. Yeah. This is like, it's, it's coming out in like five days. I'm surprised they're still. I mean, I get pushing it, I get marketing it. I do a, a more simple trailer when it's this close. Most people probably know if they're already going to buy it or not. I haven't seen any other marketing for this, though. I still don't think I've ever seen a trailer or a commercial for Deathloop that wasn't at a game show. No, nothing on YouTube. Nothing on... Whatever else. On any of your socials or any of your social needs. Is this a contest for them? Some type of experiment? How does this time loop work? Does anybody remember? Why is everyone wearing a mask? Why is everybody wearing a mask? All right, except you and the competing assassin, right? I want you to remember. Her. I want you to remember why you came here. Huh. Is that? Dang, look good. He's the head of security? I don't think we knew that yet. I've imagined myself a way out. Alright, so we'll... That's right, you have to kill every one of the main targets in the same loop. Right? And within 24 hours, kill all eight targets. One rival assassin. You gotta kill them all. Break this time loop before it breaks me. Mm-hmm. Death loop, September 14th. First year to succeed. Die, die again. Cute. Yeah, literally five days from now.
creepy. Unnerving. Hey, some kind of obelisk or tower. Giants Among Us. Kid A, a Kid Amnesia exhibition. Presented by Radiohead, what? No clue. No clue what that is. It's November though. I gotta go back and watch that again and try and read the description of what that the heck that was. Guitar simulator. Part of this game now has a little. Oh, that's pretty. Again, give me an interesting, good looking aesthetic over beautiful graphics any day of the week. Don't get me wrong, I love beautiful graphics in a game, but. Interesting. Oh boy, I could take over a seagull just like the fruit from Wind Waker. Oh boy, I could take over a little pup. A little pupper. A crab with a little flower on it. Flower crab. Turtle with a little flower on it. They all have little flowers on them. Very Wind Waker, look at that. No, uh, Breath of the Wild, sorry. No, Wind Waker also has a giant leaf. Yeah, you need to find the all right. Chia. A game inspired by New Caledonia. Alright, no, no release information on that, but it's just something else that they're working on. I know... I'll try to see. So yeah, Deathloop is in five days, Rainbow Six Extraction is in seven days, and Kina Bridge of Spirits is in ten days. And Life is Strange True Colors is tomorrow. Tales of Arise is tomorrow. And Life is Strange Remastered is on the 30th. Last night checked, we were all a bunch of thieves digging around when we shouldn't. Really easy. Oh, the. Because that was two and that was three. So are they re releasing the Nathan Drake collection? That was three right there. Are you ready to seek your fortune? And four. I saw it in Nate's brother, I think. So we got. Alright, so just re releasing the Uncharted series. Did I see anything for Lost Legacy in there? I'm Herman Hulst, head of PlayStation Studios. Maybe. PlayStation Studios at its heart. You can put a little star there. I need to go double back to check that. At our collective of AAA studios all across the globe. Everything we do is driven and inspired by Oh, we see anything from our as creators. PlayStation Studios, like Santa Monica Studios, perhaps. Boundaries of storytelling even further. Our world-class development teams at PlayStation Studios have already delivered such incredible gaming experiences for PS5, and we're only just getting started. As you'll see today with the lineup of exclusive games coming for PlayStation Studios, we're going to continue to drive innovation, advance gaming, while always embracing the legacy of PlayStation, and creating games that matter. Games that you're not going to find anywhere else. Enjoy. They haven't yet touched on the whole 
uh, upgrading thing with Horizon that they had to do a lot of backtracking on. At the dark Insomniac and Marvel. This Wolverine? What? Yes! Yes, please! What? I saw a man in a plaid shirt and a cowboy hat at a bar. In, in Marvel, that's where my mind goes. My mind goes just right, straight, immediately to Wolverine. He had the, the hair, the black hair. I was looking very closely at the center of his hands, and you could kind of see scarring between each of the knuckles. And I'm like, that's, that's him. That's 100% just our boy Logan. James Howlett himself. I, I'm not a racing game guy. So I'm just going to dim that a bit. Oh my gosh, yes, a hundred thousand percent yes. I don't know what this means for Spidey. I don't know what this means for Spidey. Insomniac, I was kind of hoping Insomniac would release Spider-Man 2 and we find out what's going on with that because I, again, I just beat, uh, Miles Morales, check that out on YouTube or in my Twitch archive, but... So I'm really excited for the next Spider-Man, whenever that comes out. Because um, they, they set up so much with Venom and the more Sinister Six stuff and Green Goblin. But I was never... I would not, had you told me that Marvel and Insomniac were making a new game, of all the characters, I would not have picked Wolverine. I am super excited. Um, the last game I played with Wolverine, I mean, aside from team games, I played, because uh, he was in uh, Ultimate Alliance 3. Uh, but I very much remember, and I have fond memories of playing the, this is going to sound horrible, the X-Men Origins Wolverine game for PS3, which was, to me, enjoyable in a way that was directly and proportionally opposed to the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie. But Wolverine, I would never have guessed that. I would have guessed an Iron Man game before Wolverine. I would have guessed a Thor game before Wolverine. I would have guessed a Hulk game before Wolverine, a Black Widow game, a Captain Marvel game, a Miss Marvel game, uh, an Iron Heart, Riri Williams. I would have expected that before I would have called Wolverine. I would have expected a more contemporary MCU property that Marvel wanted to push, but now Marvel does have the X-Men back, so... Yeah, I could see it, I, and I could absolutely see it just being a bloody balls-to-the-wall battle. Okay, we're at our next trailer. Michaels. Goodman Street and Greenwich. For as long as I can remember, I have looked for an equal. One who could push me. Morbius? Well, that's Spidey and Miles. We get to play as both. We do get to play as both. Could it be Craven? One who could even beat me. Are they gonna do Craven's last hunt over here?
That sounds like Venom. Boy, what? Yes, on board. Don't care if I have to wait a year or two. On board. No, yes. Yes. That's all I wanted. I'm happy. Everything else, don't care. You know what? Really excited for Kodor. I do actually care about that. Don't care? So, Kodor, Wolverine, Spider-Man. I'm done. I don't need anything else from this show. I'm good. But there's still going to be more because they're still continuing. That was definitely either Craven or Morbius talking from the... Done. I'm done. This is amazing. We just got three really good trailers. And then this. Just Look at Atreus. It's getting a little bigger. Time is running out. Listen to that voice. Yeah, yeah, look at him. He's a little teenager now. War is coming. Boy! Story doesn't end hiding in these woods. I should be out there. Finding out who I am, who Loki is. Chill out, Loki. I will not allow you to do the fight of God. I don't want to fight anyone. I just want answers. And if those answers lead to war with Asgard, maybe that's what Mother wanted. You do not know what Mother wanted. Well, oh, Mimir. Dull expression anywhere. He's writing with his mouth. And there he is, yeah, you get him in your head. What if there was someone who could help us? You mean Tyr? The old god of war in these lands. Tyr? Well, for a dead man, Odin seemed pretty keen on seeing he wasn't found. Ooh, and we're getting actual civilizations in towns. We gotta find him. Come in! The dwarves? We're trying to stop Ragnarok to help people. What if the only way to do that is war? By finding the old god of war? That's Kratos, the Greek god of war, and Tyr, the Norse god of war? Stop thinking like a father for a moment and start thinking like a general! Never again. You seem like a calm and reasonable person. Are you a calm and reasonable person? And that's where the last game ended, with Thor. In moments of crisis. Is that a centaur? Panic does nothing. Dark elves, maybe? No, dark elves were the, the insectoid armored creatures, right? Him and his light creatures? Ragnarok? Yeah, it's gonna be Ragnarok. You'll get your answers soon enough. Well, some of them. Who are you? No release date. More updates in 10. Why uh, a quick pause? Just a quick chance for me to catch my breath from almost having a heart attack for... Three reveals in a row? Oh, there was Gran Turismo in there, but I don't... Man, yeah, whatever. Wolverine, Spider-Man, God of War. Bam, bam, bam. Holy crap on a cracker. What? What? Just... <sighs> Shaking. Losing my mind over here. Alright, well this is just... And I'm gonna turn this down because I don't want to get muted. And... You know, I'm just going to straight mute it, because uh, at this point, I'm just going to start talking, because... Holy crap! That was... That was, what, only... How, how long was the show? 40 minutes? Yeah, it started at 4 o'clock, so it was about 44 minutes. Uh... Uh, yeah, we, we... Started off with Kodor. Yes, please. 
really like Forspoken. Uh, I keep, that, that keeps intriguing me. A new property by Square. But Wolverine made by Insomniac. And I'm in the position to trust Insomniac. They have been doing very well over the past few years. And people were very curious about Spider-Man 2. Are, is it just going to be Peter? Is it going to be Peter with Miles in some parts? It looks like they're both playable there. Uh, more more info, info and updates, updates coming right, right now. And, and I'm, I'm in fact joined, joined by no less than PlayStation Studios head Herman Holst. Uh, Herman, really strong showing here from PlayStation Studios tonight, including an awesome new look at GT7 and finally a release date. GT7 is coming in March, and I don't think fans are going to be disappointed with what Yamauchi Sun and Polyphony have been working on. Alright, uh, of all of the updates, I get it, Gran Turismo has a big following. It's not for me. But I'll, I'll let this play in the background, and if something else interesting pops up while I'm talking, I will focus on that. But when they were in that bar, and I saw Marvel and, uh, and Insomniac, and I didn't see Spider-Man, I was disappointed. When they turned and focused on that man's back, and you saw the cowboy hat, you saw the raven black hair, you saw the uh, flannel shirt, and they were playing that country-esque theme, and he, you, you saw all the people dead around him, and you focused on the hands of the... There we go. Marvel's Wolverine. It's kind of a shock. You work really closely with Insom, Herman, so what can you tell us about just... Why uh, Insom gets so fired up about the Marvel Universe? I mean, Sid, you said it. Great properties. Fired. They've been just so productive. And I think the team in Insomniac, they're really always challenging themselves to raise the bar with their approach to storytelling and, and craftsmanship. And it's really evident in the consistently high quality of games that they've been delivering. Over I'm going I'm to agree there. I think on top of that, they really, really... I haven't heard much in the way of scandals and recently from the way that also of Insomniac. To the, to, to the way that they work with other PlayStation teams. Because there are a lot of companies that are kind of with floundering right now. Marvel, and that collaboration resulted in the amazing first two Marvel Spider-Man games. And I know that Insomniac are extremely excited to be... Like these people look very huntery. So I'm leaning now. towards... And they're also going to be raising the bar again. You know, in terms of immersion, action, visual and fidelity. Like they were teaming up I think with Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be a spectacular showpiece for gaming. And they're also so thrilled to then bring gamers an emotional... Yeah, look at that. You can see the blood and the... Into Marvel's Wolverine. I think that PlayStation fans are really going to be in for a treat over the next few years. Very cool. Yeah. Very exciting We didn't get a release and, and, and window for Wolverine or Spider-Man. got our first big look at God of War Ragnarok. Herman, oh no, we got 2023 for Spider-Man. Santa Monica right. Studio is going with this one. You know, like many of the fans, I'm personally really, really invested in the relationship between Kratos and Atreus. We got to see in the trailer that there's some real tension brewing between them as Ragnarok approaches. Hey, so, you know, I Kratos, why don't you stop being such a good dad and focus on killing people instead? You gotta trust Come me on, when Atreus. I say that you Santa Monica Studio have prepared quite a few twists and turns for players as they set up the finale of the Norse saga so in God of War Ragnarok. We're going to get an update on God of War Ragnarok from Santa Monica Studio here in just a moment. But before you go, Herman, I want to get your take on Horizon Forbidden West. Now, we've learned that this one is coming out in February. I am sure that by this point you have played it. So what has jumped out to you? What can you tell us about the game? I've had a chance to play the game. Yeah, they haven't really, they didn't really talk about Horizon. It looks great on both. For PS5, the level of detail on the Aloy, her kids, their wow, lighting, it's a just PS5. A yeah, I can do even it. more amazing because the environments have so much going on too. From the ruins of San Francisco to those new underwater areas, everything just looks breathtaking. And it loads really fast because of the SSD. Plus, the combat in the game has so much variety. It's all based on player yeah, choice, really so many cool weapons and tools. And when you combine these together, that comes in really handy. Uh, when you're dealing with the this was probably the last thing I PS5, remember seeing from PlayStation, right? Their, um, the controller, I think in my mind, really their release of the, the experience, breakdown gameplay uh, trailer of 
you know, the your gameplay demo. I know them so well. I'm so uh, proud of them. They're creating something incredibly special. I just can't wait for gamers to get the next chapter of Aloy's adventure in their hands. Thanks for the update, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. We're joined now by Eric and Corey from Santa Monica Studio. And I wanted to Corey. check in with you two on the big announce we saw just a few minutes ago, God of War Ragnarok. We finally got our first Still big one of the most touching and moments Eric, in gaming over the past you. few years was Corey Barlow reading comments about how uh, amazing, how beloved God of War yeah, was and him uh, coming to tears. Since uh, 2004, uh, in many different capacities, working with both Santa Monica and Randy Athon on the God of War franchise. And uh, I don't know why, but they thought it'd be a good idea to say, hey, do you want to direct this one? And so that's what I'm doing. I'm directing God of War Ragnarok, or as Corey likes to call it, never heard of it. Um, so that's the update on that. So Eric, uh, why the shift in leadership on God of War Ragnarok? Um, it's always been a tradition here at Santa Monica to change the directors across the games. You know, we've had really good success with that. Corey's been the only repeat director, and you know, rightfully so. He's pretty damn good at what he does. So that's kind of what it is. The important thing for us is to be able to kind of get a fresh perspective each time, uh, but also, you know, fresh pair of legs in the sense that you're really exhausted at the end of finishing one of these things. So you got to con somebody else into doing it, like him. I mean, he has, but he so still has the aesthetics or themes God of War tattoo on his creative. I mean, I, I guess what I'm getting at is like, how, how do you see yourself leaving your fingerprints on God of War Ragnarok? It's kind of the designer in me wants to answer one way, but as a director, you have to answer a different way. I think you have to learn how to jettison your own profession when you when you switch over to the director's role, which I'm sure Corey can uh, understand. I mean, he kind of animated a little bit on God of War 2, and we kind of had to throw it all out, except for that sneaky backflip that Curtis has never done again that we left in. But that's the perk of being the director, I guess. Um, but, you know, from my point of view, like, we want to tell a very... Heartfelt still epic looks, story. Still looks as, beautiful. You know, I'm intrigued with this. We're actually going to see a settlement, a civilization, kind of on people, to stuff and letting go of things. You we know, saw so few kind of other characters in and, uh, like, in the God of War for PS4. Taking, like, slices of life and I like that Mimir's head is if you getting will, to draw. That and that's you know, the, the and that's totally, that totally the lake from God of War One. Weird thing, God of War One when it's from the Midwest, so like slice of life, very common, mundane things are just as interesting as big world events. So we try to collide those things together. It's you know, make an experience that's very worthy of the God of War name. So with the game officially being called God of War Ragnarok, um, which was never in that, it doesn't take a genius to think that perhaps Ragnarok factors into this game in some manner. Can, can you confirm that, Eric? Yeah, I mean, you can't call the game God of War Ragnarok and not have Ragnarok happen in the game. Thank so, you. you know, it's it's going to happen. Good. We're going to cap off the Norse series with There's it. There's Hugin and Munin. Um, I think Chris Judge said it best in the announced trailer last year. Prepare yourselves. The last game ended with a teaser of sorts for Thor. And I just got to know, know, was that Thor's voice we heard in the trailer really? just a few minutes ago? No, that was definitely Thor's voice uh, that we heard in the trailer. Uh, Thor is being played by Ryan Hurst, um, which you might know him from uh, Sons of Anarchy. He played Opie, one of my favorite characters ever. Um, and we're just delighted to have him come play in the God of War sandbox. And uh, his take on Thor and our take visually on Thor are very different than the, the hunky Australian you might know. You know, he's much closer to the... Uh, Norse mythology version. You know, he's this big, burly, almost hedonistic man-child, red hair, mm -hmm. you know, left-handed, just just a little off kilter than the Thor that a lot of people know right now. So I can't wait for people to experience more of that when the game's done. We also heard the name Odin in tonight's trailer. So I imagine if we're going to experience Ragnarok, Odin's going to have to play a pretty if big role here, right? The leader Definitely. of the Norse gods. I mean, Odin is the all-father of all the realms, mm -hmm. so he's going to show up when Ragnarok happens. Um, we're very, very happy to have uh, And Odin is shift related to, to Tyr, isn't he? Uh, you may know him as Toby from the West Wing. Um, this was one that we never thought was going to happen. Wait, what? It was like kind of a shot in the dark, and uh, he got back to us, and we walked him around the mocap volume, and he was like, I've never done anything like this before. Let's do it. And so, uh, uh, West Wing is one of my favorite all-time shows, and Toby, how he factors in. the actor that plays Toby, is a uh, like phenomenal Thor. actor. He's like yeah. a, old man he's just kind of busy with his own things and doing whatever he wants and uh he's, Toby Ziegler, he's a little bit of castle uh, or anything like that so it's, it's a again a different take kind Richard of Chip, thank you. take what's known and curveball it a little bit and, yeah know, make it special we also saw a couple Ziegler. of new characters tonight so what can you tell us about them and him his and talking about the little squid 
Oh no, you're talking about Tyr, Tyr, the big guy. Yeah, I was actually curious about the North Scott Scott War climbing around the uh, Curtis and Trace. Have finally found him. We, we talked a lot about him in 2018, so we were like, well, we might as well show him to the people. And then the last character we saw at the trailer, you know, like with the little wink and smile from Anger Boda. She's one of the last remaining giants, um, and her story is pretty amazing and how it fits into the world of God of War. Um, Tears being played by uh, Ben Prendergast, um, who's been completely absorbed in the role, even though he is not a giant as Tyr is. Um, and then uh, Anger Boda is being played by uh, Leia De Leon Hayes, who's a complete treasure on set. She's been amazing. Watching her chemistry with the other characters has been so that's going to delve into uh, uh, so, Atreus Loki's backstory as uh, uh, the last descendant of the giants. So many talented people with the studio building else. this trailer and putting it together. I just want to give a shout out to the team. I love you guys. You know, I wish you could be here doing this interview with me. I wish you were all behind me right now at the studio. Um, that would have been completely amazing. And you know, lastly, to our fans, uh, we have a saying at the studio that we are fans of our fans, and I cannot wait to watch all the tweets. Messages. The I really should have brought down my Aloy and my Kratos statue over right there. Heart, and I just get excited and hyped. And I guess that, that was the collector's that edition of Atreus and guys. Kratos Thank you very Kevin Jogger. Now, Corey, we haven't heard a whole lot out of you here tonight. So now that we know you're not directing God of War Ragnarok, I was hoping maybe you could give us a little clue about what you may or may not be working on next. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You'd like me to just spill the beans and tell you everything that's going on right now. We're actually doing a bunch of stuff. It's really exciting, all the things that we're doing, and you're tempted to know what is this, but I don't really have anything I can talk about right now specifically. I have a friend of a friend who actually moved out to California right before the incredibly uh, excited that I finally understand that world-changing like events of 2020, and he... Ragnarok. I was way off. I was thinking it was something else that they were talking about. I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll wait, wait to, to, to get any deeper into anything else until later. We'll, we'll talk, talk again, Sid. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Corey. I, I do love Corey Ball. Uh, and next up, we have Barney. Ryan Not Treadwell. Well. He's the lead producer at Aspire. And wouldn't you know, just a little while ago, we got the announcement of a remake for Star Wars Knights of the Old Being able to see that. So, Ryan, I guess my question is, is this like a, a, a remaster of the original game, or what's going on here? It's so much more top sad. down. This bottom is a up remake? complete remake of this beloved Star Wars story. For Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake, we are rebuilding from the ground up while maintaining that integrity of story and character. Like Revan looks so Ryan, incredible. How much of a remake are we talking about here? I mean, is this updating some graphics, adding some some higher resolution modes? You know, the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is a true classic and one of our favorite Star Wars stories ever. We want to honor that original story and make it as impactful for players today. In terms of the visuals, I'm wondering... we have an opportunity to present this story with a much higher level of fidelity than was possible in the past, while making sure that we're being authentic to what players loved about it. So it sounds game. like it's going to be more so akin to a classic uh, Star Wars game FF7 remake. remake. Uh, but this is a much bigger project than anything More so had. than like so a... What can you tell me about the team behind the game? You're absolutely right. Well, Aspire has enjoyed a uh, more so than like a Demon Souls, which is a fairly one-to-one -one parallel from what I'm hearing. To new audiences but on like platforms, this project is on a completely different level to anything we have done before. That's why we knew we had to assemble the right team to do this project justice. We put together a team full of industry veterans from fan favorite RPGs, even including the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Awesome. It has been awesome. a really rewarding experience to assemble such a talented team to bring back an epic game. Of course, we're also working closely with the amazing teams at PlayStation and Lucasfilm Games. Together, we couldn't be more excited about what and we're going to show you. I know they said it was coming to PS5. Are, course, this is a Star Wars exclusive. One of the nice parts about building a team to make a big Star Wars game is the ability to instantly bond with all the new people of your favorite aspects of Star Wars. The we all have different Star Wars memorabilia behind us in every call, and it always sparks up a good conversation. All right, thanks, Ryan. I think the only Very Star Wars memorabilia I have in my room is more that one. Thank you, Sid. It will be some time before we're ready to show more, but we're very excited about being cool. able to reveal more. Take your time. Take future. your time. All right, and that's it for our show. You can catch up on all the big news on PlayStation.blog and check out all the trailers from tonight's PlayStation Showcase on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Guys, what a show. Literally starting off with Kodor is such a power move.
I got to do some some more research on Aspire. But uh, really curious what they're going to do with Knights of the Old Republic. Like, are we? What are we going to see from uh, Malik, Darth Malik? What are we going to see from Sean? How are they going to handle HK? Because uh, he was uh, such a fan favorite character, HK forty seven. So I'm intrigued as to what they're going to do there. Uh, then there was some stuff, yeah, Project Eve, neat, whatever, uh, you're, you'll be in the back of my mind for now, same with you, Tiny Tina, you'll be in the back of my mind for now, you're not coming out till March anyway, For Spoken, you're coming out in spring of 2022, For Spoken looks neat, the type of magic system they were using the level of mobility that they were showing looks really cool it does not look water bubbles sure imprisoning water bubbles super jumping and dashing laying explosive mines this looks fun sliding super jump in I love good mobility in games. That's why I love Spidey. Water prisons, rock blasts, rock rapid fire bullets. So it's very elemental magic it's looking like. And that was some kind of levitation it looks like there. Right here. Fire whips and fire weapons. Rocket dash, fire blade. It's so a very elemental water to ice. I liked that. I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. They even had the Doctor Strange shields that were breaking. Spring 2022. Cool. Uh, again, Extraction comes out and what? Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction comes out on the 16th. So that's exactly a week from today. I gotta check in with some friends and see. Oh wait, was it pushed back? It was, it was pushed back to January. Okay, yeah, because the original release date at E3 said it was coming out on September 16th. All right, well I guess that has changed and I will update my list. Oh dear. I, I, genius. I plugged in the power, but I didn't even plug in the computer. My dumbass is so dumb. There we go. Alan Wake, again, never played Alan Wake. I know that's a, 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 a crime to indie, uh... It was, it was it really an indie game, Remedy Studios. I don't know who they were under the banner of at the time of Alan Wake's release. But again, at the time, I only had a PS3. I did not have a 360. My 360 had died before that, and I never replaced it. And I converted to playing almost exclusively on my PS3 and laptop at the time. And, the, and my... Wii. Yes, it would have been the Wii at the time. But it's a crime that I've, I still, to this day, fully on my Steam list. It's literally at the top of my Steam list. It's A. Unless, no, there's some, there's some numbers above it. But it's near the top of my Steam list. I think I even have a shortcut downloaded onto my computer that I've never used. Yeah, Alan Wake, Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, that's what I was curious about. Let's move past Deathloop. Move into whatever Kid Amnesia was. Tachia looks cute. That was Lost Legacy, okay. 
So is it just they're re-releasing all of the... Yeah, mix of gameplay and trailer. Okay. You're right there, The Lost Legacy. Remastered. So it's all of them. It's the Nathan Drake collection. So one, two, three. I guess four, right? That's from four. Him hanging and, and smashing through the thing. And there's Nate's brother. So yeah, so there's 100% four. So it's one, two, three, four, and Lost Legacy. All remastered for PS5. Sure. Is it going to be released as one collection? Or are they going to be released individually? I would like to know that. It's fine. Moving on. Man. Wolverine, man. Look at this, man. Those hairy arms. Who are those bloody knuckles? Who else could it be? It just feels good. In development for PlayStation 5. Yeah. Insomniac has been working really closely with PlayStation over the past few years. I... They make good games. Sony, hop on that. Keep giving them money. Keep letting them make these great games, Sony. Thank you. So Wolverine, this was... Great as well. Here. This is what I wanted to watch again. Uh, I, wanted... I wanted to listen to the voice. As long as I can remember, I have looked for an equal. It's got to be Craven, right? That's the very Eastern European accent. Looking for an equal, a challenge, a fight. Also, Iron Spider Arms. Did I not notice that? He has his... That's going to get confusing, right? In Miles Morales, we saw that he named his powers the Venom Powers. And... Yeah, this, these are probably like Craven's team of mercenaries. They have the kind of furry leg. You see, look at that. That's kind of Craven esque. The leather and the fur. So it's going to be Craven and Venom. Insane. That's that's the black suit Spider-Man logo Venom logo right there. 2023. Oh, man. I feel like again a lot of really good, really awesome trailers right there. A bunch of mind-blowing stuff right there. Spider-Man is what did me in. I flipped a flipped my lid when I saw Wolverine. But Spider-Man. All the way, right? Flip flip, it's the He's our friendly neighborhood guy. It's it's what it's what it is, right? It is what it is. Oh. A lot to look forward to. That was a really solid conference, guys. All right. Yeah, I think my my highlights I got to have I can't do a top 3. I can't in good conscience do a top three. I have to do a top four. And it's number one is Spider-Man 2. Number one. 
most looked forward to thing is that. Then this could be, uh, this is in so much contention for what is two, three, and four. It's Coder Wolverine and God of War Ragnarok. Which is technically the seventh God of War. I was trying to do the math there, right? There were the three main God of Wars, the 2018 one, Chains of Olympus, and I feel like there was another one for PSP, aside from Chains. One of them was the prequel to God of War 1, and one of them was about his brother, his half-brother. Uh, and then this one, so this is going to be God of War 7. I mean, uh, honorable shout-outs to uh, Forspoken, Alan Wake, Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, and Deathloop. Jazz for all those, but you don't hold a candle. I'm sorry. You're good. You look good. You feel good. You do not hold a candle to Knights of the Old Republic. You do not hold a candle to Wolverine. He's everyone's favorite X-Man. Not mine, actually. I, I've always been more of a Cyclops guy, and I'm in a vast minority on that. I recognize. But Wolverine fan favorite. Everyone's favorite five-foot-something. Very short man. Angry Canadian. Named after a very weird animal. Spidey and God of War. I just... I'm done, guys. I loved it. What were your highlights? Tell me in the comments. I will get back to you. I will respond to everyone, but... Man, I... I loved it. Right, I think that's where we're going to wrap for now, guys. So again, tell me what you thought. I really dug it. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe. It really helped me out, and it doesn't hurt you a damn. Uh, so that's all for now, guys. I will be seeing you. Until next time.